So you had chronic kidney disease and your doctor told you to watch your phosphorus. How the heck do you do that? Well, don't worry. We're going to talk all about managing your phosphorus coming right up. Hello, kidney warriors. James here, your favorite online kidney health coach. And for all of us who have chronic kidney disease, we have to watch our phosphorus. If we don't, oh, we could get heart problems, weak and brittle bones, all sorts of issues. Now, before we get into this, if you haven't already, take a moment and please subscribe to my YouTube channel and click that little bell icon. That way you'll get a notification every time I upload a brand new video. And now to today's topic, phosphorus. Phosphorus is a mineral found throughout your body. As a matter of fact, it's one of the most abundant minerals there are. And it works with calcium and vitamin D to make your bones nice and strong and healthy. When your phosphorus gets out of balance, usually your kidneys take care of that and keep everything nice. But those of us with reduced kidney function because of kidney disease, we need to help our kidneys out by giving it just the right amount of phosphorus, not too little and not too much. That way we can avoid heart problems and bone issues. So let's talk about phosphorus buildup. How the heck does it get into your body? Well, it's pretty much in everything you eat and drink. So you are constantly consuming phosphorus. Now, it also comes in a variety of forms, lots of different names, does a lot of different things, so you know it can be tricky and hard to find. But on the good side, phosphorus, it seems to do magic for foods and beverages. That's why it is everywhere. We just gotta be really careful not to get too much or too little, because both of those can be problematic for us with chronic kidney disease. Now let's talk about hidden phosphorus. The food industry loves phosphorus. They are so in love with it. They are using it everywhere. And there are foods that just recently were considered low phosphorus, but now the food industry decided, ah, let's pump phosphorus in there and make it even better. And now, now yeah, they're no longer low phosphorus. So you gotta keep an eye out. And this is a list of things that are changing. And phosphorus is, it's gonna be everywhere pretty soon. So we gotta be really, really diligent at tracking it so that we don't get too much. So what are some of the places that used to be low phosphorus that now may be high? Well, flavored waters, iced teas, sodas and other beverages, enhanced meats and chicken products. Yeah, they put phosphorus in those, makes them juicy. Breakfast cereal bars, non-dairy creamers and bottled coffee beverages. Chances are you're enjoying one or more of these and you may be lucky, you may have one that's low phosphorus, but you gotta check those labels. We're gonna talk about that more in a second. Those can quickly become high phosphorus just with a change from the manufacturer to make it even better or the perception of better for more people. So why is phosphorus everywhere? Well, the public has demanded it. Yeah, believe it or not, us, the people who buy the foods, we're the one pushing for more and more phosphorus. We want foods that are grab and go. We are a grab and go society. We wanna run in, grab something. We also are looking for things that are quick, considered healthy, and take very little time to prepare. Phosphorus and phosphates, the, the additives that are part of phosphorus, make this happen. So let's take a look at why phosphorus is being used so heavily by the food industry. First of all, it is considered a jack of all trade when it comes to ingredients. It does a wide variety of things. Here's some of the things that it does. It can lower the cost of manufacturing because it's really, really cheap to add to food and it can replace things that cost a lot more. It makes foods creamier it allows foods that normally wouldn't melt now to melt. You can maintain the juiciness of meat. Yeah, you probably didn't realize that. Oh my goodness, sodium phosphates being used a lot in meat. You know, red meat, chicken, 
to make it juicy. It's absorbing water and you got those phosphates in there. Also, it can prevent beverages from separating into the individual ingredients. You don't want all the sugar at the bottom and the juice in the middle and the water up above it. it looks ugly. People have to shake it and they don't want to do that. And most importantly, it extends shelf life. And that right there is the single most reason you're going to run into phosphate. If you see something that's bagged or boxed and it's not refrigerated, chances are it's loaded with phosphates. Yep, lots of different forms of phosphorus in there. That's why when you shop at the grocery store, that middle inside section with all the boxes and bags is the danger zone. That's where there's lots of phosphorus. There's also some potassium, but there is a ton of phosphorus in that section of the store. That's why we like to shop on the outside. The, the, uh, the, the fresh cut meats, the vegetables, the fruit, all that stuff. We want to spend more time there when we're shopping in the grocery store. Now, how can you minimize the amount of phosphorus that comes into your body? Well, it comes down to four letters, four very important letters. Diet, yeah. Most phosphorus you're consuming, so if we can control what we eat and how much phosphorus is in that, we can control the phosphorus in our body. And similar to potassium, if you start reducing phosphorus today in your diet, the results will be almost instant that your phosphorus levels will start to go down in your blood work. This is something that's quick and easy to manage with diet. Let's talk about foods you really should avoid when you're trying to manage your phosphorus. It's going to come down to heavily processed foods. If they've been heavily processed, they are probably loaded with lots of different forms of phosphorus, tons of it. Probably a ton of sodium you don't need either, and it's probably the cheap wrong kind of sodium when it comes to processed foods. Now, what do I mean by processed foods? Well, this includes fast food, most frozen dinners, hamburger meat and hot dogs, cured ham and jerky, chips, cakes, and snack bars, and most canned items. Now, you may be thinking, oh, James, I found this healthy choice can soup. I'm not saying it's called healthy choice. <laughs> that was a really bad wink. But read those labels. Turn that can around, look what's in there. Chances are what sounds healthy and looks healthy on that front label saying the word healthy and great choice, good for your heart. Low sodium, well, chances are it's not healthy for you when you put all the ingredients together. The claims of something being healthy are so freaking loose, it is ridiculous. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna go off key just a minute. Someone this morning shared in one of the Facebook groups that I belong to a photo that they took of a bag of sunflower seeds labeled low sodium. And each serving of sunflower seeds was considered a bag of these was 90% of your daily sodium. How the heck is that low sodium? So you gotta be careful. Even with these canned items, they say they're healthy, read the labels. Chances are it's not. And it's a can. It's gonna sit around for a long time. Could be years. Oh my goodness, before you open that and eat it. That's loaded with phosphorus. Yeah, there's all sorts of phosphates in there. Just keeping it fresh, keeping it creamy, keeping it from separating. Yeah, ugh. So how can you tell if food has phosphorus in it? Well, phosphate, so it's a, the general name for all these chemical ingredients added to food, um, come in a wide variety of names and you gotta learn them. You need to know what to look for. So I'm gonna cover the most common ones real quick and then I'm gonna give you a little shortcut on how to find them easier. All right, you got your pen and paper ready? I'll try not to go too fast. These are the most common ones. We have aluminum phosphate, dicalcium phosphate, disodium phosphate, hexametaphosphate, monocalcium phosphate, monosodium phosphate, Phosphoric acid, oh, that doesn't sound good in food, does it? Ugh. And polyphosphate, you got those? I'm not done, oh my goodness. Yeah, this list is gigantic. 
We also have pyrophosphate, sodium hexametaphosphate, sodium phosphate, sodium polyphosphate, sodium tripolyphosphate, tetrasodium phosphate, tetrasodium pyrophosphate, tricalcium phosphate, and just, hold on, one more, one more of the popular ones. We have trisodium phosphate, holy cow. Tricalcium, trisodium, poly, tripoly, there are so many different versions of phosphates out there. All these things building up our phosphorus level in our blood, putting us at risk. Now, you're not gonna memorize this list. No one does. And there's more. This isn't even all of them. Can you believe that? This is just the most popular ones. Unfreaking believe these are all chemicals being poured into our foods and our drinks. Unbelievable, in my opinion. Never would have known that if I didn't have chronic kidney disease and my life depended on the food that I eat. So how the heck can you find those phosphates? Well, it comes down to reading the labels. You have to read the labels of everything you buy. If it's a packaged good, it's gonna have a label on it, you better look at those ingredients. You have to. Now, you don't have to take that long list of names of phosphates with you to look for them. Here's the trick. You're gonna look for four letters, and this time it's not diet. It's P-H-O-S, FOS. All of those had P-H-O-S in them. Disodium phosphate, polysodium phosphate, polycalcium phosphate, they all had FOS in their names. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at the labels. You're looking for FOS, P-H-O-S. If it exists in the first half of the ingredients, throw that puppy out. It is no good, high phosphorus, you don't need it. Your life is too important to have that. Now, if it doesn't appear in the first half of the ingredients, okay, we're on a good start, we're not there yet. You gotta keep reading. If it appears two or more times anywhere in the ingredients, throw it out. That is crap you don't need. It's gonna hurt you. It's gonna skyrocket your phosphorus levels. And oh, we're gonna talk about what it's gonna to do to you. You don't want it, okay? And chances are, when we start talking about the symptoms, many of you are gonna go like, oh my goodness, I have that. I bet you it is high phosphorus. Holy cow! Because it's in everything. It's a chemical we don't need. Now, in addition to looking for phosphorus, there are foods that are considered double jeopardy foods. These are foods that are high both in phosphorus and potassium. These ones you wanna, you wanna stick in your memory to always remember those and I personally just plain avoid these. Now you could just eat very little of them. You can always limit your portion sizes. But me, I was stage five, I was at death's door. I was a, you know, they told me 45 days, if I didn't have dialysis, I'd be dead. My wife would be picking out a casket. I said, no, I'm making it to stage two. In one year, January, 2020, I'm gonna be stage two. These foods are not gonna derail me from getting to what I wanna get to. I've been avoiding them all so far, and I have just been getting better. You guys have seen it. You could do this too. All right, don't fall for it. Oh, but I love that, I gotta have it. No, your life is worth more. Future you is depending on you today to make the right decisions, all right? Now let's look at what these double jeopardy foods are, the ones you need to just say, stay away, get them out of here. First of all, cheese, I know I love cheese. Now some cheeses, you might find some that work a little bit better like a low sodium Swiss, that's a, a decent option, but pretty much, just try to stay away from cheese, especially if you're stage four, you're stage five. You know, once you get to stage three, you can be a little bit more relaxed. If you're stage two, a little more relaxed, but you need to watch out. They're loaded with phosphorus. Chocolate, oh, cream soups, I can live without those, no problem. Dried beans and peas, another easy one to give up. Ice cream, yeah, it's creamy, it's delicious. It's got phosphorus and potassium in it. Milk, nuts, 
And what are nuts made, made of? Or what do nuts make? Peanut butter. All right, these are things that, you know, they're not gonna kill you from eating them. If you do eat them, watch your portions, okay? Be real careful. Use something to track the, the ingredients and make sure you don't get too much. For me, stage five and four, these were all off the list. Now, some of you are gonna say, oh, but James, I saw your food list that you were using to eat from. It had ice cream and it said I can have three fourths of a cup. Well, that's portion control. You're controlling your portions there. But for me, I wanna fast track it to getting better. I don't want it to take me five years to get to stage two, I gave myself one year, 12 months, to do what the doctor said is impossible, can't be done. I've already done the impossible, according to them, they were wrong, I'm not doing the impossible. I'm changing my lifestyle, I'm watching the foods I eat, I'm watching my phosphorus, I'm watching my potassium, calcium, my protein, my sodium, my calories, I'm watching all those, and I'm getting better. All right, let's move on to some more foods that you gotta be careful with to either avoid or limit. Now these are more of the limit. Watch your, your uh, quantities up. Um, but a couple of them I wanna point out are completely avoid. Comes to beverages, beer and ale, yeah, it's high on phosphorus. Canned iced teas, chocolate drinks, cocoa, oh, that includes you know making hot chocolate or something like that. Dark colas, okay, I wanna pause here for a second. Just stop with the dark colas, you gotta give it up. I get messages every day, I can't give up Pepsi, I can't give up Coke, you gotta. I mean, those are just loaded with so many chemicals and you think you're helping yourself by getting the diet version? No, that's far worse, that's just more chemicals. You're just hurting your body more. It'd be better to have natural cane sugar. It's not good for you, but it's far better than just pouring in all these chemicals. I know it tastes good. It's addictive. They made it so that you would get addicted to it. You gotta fight that addiction. Get rid of dark colas, all right? The only exception, there are some root beers that are low phosphorus, but you gotta read the label, not all of them, but there are some root beers. Now, I used to like root beer when I was little, and then I just kinda outgrew it. I was a Dr. Pepper guy, oh, I love Dr. Pepper. I could drink a two liter in a heartbeat, but I gave up soda, boom, the very day that I found out you can't have these things anymore, they're bad for you, and I want you to do the same thing. All right, last on this list, drinks that are made with milk because milk has a lot of sugar and it has phosphorus in it. Now, in addition to beverages, let's take a look at dairy. We covered a few of these earlier. First is cheese, then we have cream soups, custard, ice cream, I know, it's still on there, it doesn't go away. Milk, non-Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt's a good choice, yeah. Now, you still gotta watch your sugar levels and things like that if you're diabetic or if you're doing a, a version of a ketogenic diet, watch out for the sugar. And last, pudding. Now, you, you know, a lot of people I've ran into, you know, I've, I've ran people actually physically in the stores that recognize me for my videos. And they've asked me many times, I, you know, it's very popular, about pudding. They think they can freeze it and use it as an ice cream substitute. This pudding's in a little plastic container that doesn't expire for two years. That's not natural. That's phosphorus. <laughs> that should be a commercial. That's not natural, that's phosphorus. So pudding is just loaded with it. Now, some of them have a little bit less, some require some refrigeration, and that may be a good option to look at. In addition to dairy, there's a few other things we gotta keep an eye out for. Gotta watch brewer's yeast, caramels, or caramels, however you pronounce it. I love those. Chocolate, most deli meats, hot dogs, bacon, and sausages. And why? Because those are highly processed. Most processed and prepared foods are loaded with usually a lot of extra sodium that we don't need necessarily. And I'm not saying sodium's bad. We don't need excess. And we also don't need the cheap kind that they use. 
but they're putting a lot of phosphorus in here to give it a longer shelf life, make it look better, make it look juicier. You gotta be careful, it's heavily processed. Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you know there are some frozen dinners that are processed that I eat. They are minimally processed. And they always say that on the label and I read what's in there and I look. And one of my favorite ones, I can't remember the name right now, the food's all placed on there and there's a, a plastic light cover, it's BPA free, and it's just whew, sealed right on there. Like they suck the air out of it. It's minimal processing, those I like. Also, oat bran muffins. And last on here, pizza. You got processed meats, processed cheese. You got tomato sauces loaded with potassium and you got the bread. Okay, pizza, it's a no-no. So how much phosphorus is safe? Well, the only way to measure your phosphorus is with your labs. You gotta go get blood work. And the safe zone for blood work is 2.5 to 4.5 milligrams per deciliter. And you know this could vary slightly, but that's the standard range most labs use. Now how the heck do you do that? Because you're not doing blood work constantly. You know, you can't do it every 10 minutes and measure this. No, and some of you I know your your insurance or the medical system you use may only allow you to get blood work every six months or every three months. I think that's crazy. I think it's ridiculous. I like mine often. And especially when you're trying to get things in range, you need it often to know, hey, did I go too far? Am I doing enough? Is this working? But for most people, what this means is just limiting your daily target, the amount you consume, to 700 to 1200 milligrams. Now, how do you measure that? Use an app. There's a lot of apps out there. My favorite, Chronometer. I have a link to it on dadvicetv.com with a review. It tracks phosphorus, potassium, all sorts of micronutrients. It does have a free version. It does everything you need. If you pay for it, you get some amazing reporting up on the internet that you can share with your doctors and look at. And I use that with my blood work to figure out what's happening. If something went up, I look, aha, I had a little too much of that. That's why I gotta cut it back a little bit more. Gotta stop eating that. I had too much of that. Gotta lower my portions. So why is it important to monitor your phosphorus? We kind of touched on this a little bit earlier, but this is extremely important. This is critical. This is life-saving importance. You gotta do this. First of all, phosphorus works with calcium. It's pretty much a one-to-one -one relationship between the two of them. When you have too much phosphorus, it needs calcium. So where's it gonna get the calcium? Your bones. The phosphorus pulls the calcium out of your bones, making them weak, making them brittle, making them slow to heal. Oh, this isn't good. And then what happens with all that stuff floating around, that calcium and that phosphorus bound together floating around? It can lead to very dangerous extremely dangerous deposits throughout your body. Where? Well, look at this, in your blood vessels, in your lungs, in your eyes, and in your heart. And this buildup can cause all sorts of problems, like movement problems and things like that, but it can lead to heart disease, a stroke, or a heart attack by building up. Now, what are the symptoms that you got too much? All right, this is gonna sound kind of odd. There really aren't symptoms of too much phosphorus. Now, if you're a nephrologist out there, you just went, oh, he's wrong. No. What you gotta look for is the calcium, the symptoms of not having enough calcium because your phosphorus pulled out the calcium from your bone. So we, the best way to look for symptoms is to look for symptoms of not enough calcium. Otherwise, you gotta do a blood work to find out about your phosphorus. So what are the symptoms of not enough calcium? Well, muscle cramps and spasms, numbness and tingling around the mouth, bone and joint pain, and this is a posits, getting all over there, almost like little bone spurs, weak bones, they break easy, they're brittle, 
They are very slow to heal. A rash, and now the most common one that so many of you out there have probably experienced, uncontrollable itching that just won't stop. It's all over. It could go all over your body. It could be your fingers, your hands, your toes, your feet. You know, it's at the extremities. It's just an itch that doesn't go away. Now, there's people out on Facebook groups saying, oh, it's too much phosphorus. Use lidocaine cream. No, no, you're masking the problem. You're not fixing it, it's still there. The way to fix this is diet. Reduce the phosphorus that you're consuming. Re you know, drinks, eats, any of that stuff. No phosphorus, cut it way back as much as you can and your itching and stuff will go away. Now, if you have it really bad, you better talk to your doctor because you, you don't want it to get worse. So don't just think, oh, James said I got this itching all over, I'm all good, I'll just go on a diet and it'll go away. No, an itch or any of these signs you have, mention them to your doctor. If you got extreme itching, that's an important one. Give your doctor a call, shoot them an email if they've got that available and let them know and see what they want you to do. But diet. Fix these things. Change it quickly, all right? Covering it up with a lidocaine cream or taking some Benadryl, that is not fixing the problem, all right? That's a, that, I, I don't see the problem, I don't hear the problem, la, 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 doesn't exist. It doesn't work with kidney disease, okay? It doesn't work with anything. All right, so, what are some strategies you can use? to reduce the amount of phosphorus you're eating. So we talked about reading labels and we talked that you can control it with what you eat, but here's some additional tips to help you. First of all, be aware of inexpensive budget mega stores. If they're selling stuff super cheap, they're buying it super cheap and how to get made super cheap? Magic of phosphorus. It's all in there, giving it a long shelf life. You go to some store that's selling stuff that just expired or it's about to expire. When was that stuff made? Was that made six months ago, 12 months ago, two years ago? No, it's loaded with phosphorus. You don't need it. Also, look for alternative foods and beverages. If there's something you really like and it's in a box, Unrefrigerated, see if there's a refrigerated version of it. Something that's using cold to keep it from spoiling and going bad instead of being loaded with chemicals. There will be lots of opportunities to find alternatives. You like root beer? I, mean, I advise against it because there's lots of sugar in it and I don't like sugar either. But there are some, you gotta read those labels that are low phosphorus that you can have. You like Pepsi and Coke? No. Too much sugar, too much phosphorus, too much other crap you don't need. All right. Now, because phosphorus is in practically everything, chicken, meat, whatever you buy, it's probably got some in there, limit it where you can, okay? It's not that we're trying to stay completely 100% away from phosphorus. We're just trying not to get too much of it. Medications. There are medications that can help you reduce the amount of phosphorus that's in your blood system. Now, you can't just start taking the pills and your phosphorus levels go down. These are called binders, and they kind of work like a sponge. You take the binder before you eat, and there's a time, may say 10 minutes, may say half an hour, you gotta be right on time. You take it before, and these are available as pills, chewable tablets, powders, and liquids, and they work as a sponge, and they absorb some, not all, but some of the phosphorus, and, well, you poop it out, okay? It goes through your system, doesn't go into your bloodstream, and you just get to poop it out. But you don't know how much you're getting rid of, and this is just, it's another pill. When you're trying to change the way your body works, your body is amazing. If given the right balance, there's so much it can do. Now, I can't fix everything, but it knows what to do, and it will try to fix things. It will try to keep things in balance 
if you can just set up the right environment in your body. And I'm not a big fan of taking pills unless you absolutely have to. Because every pill you take, it goes through your kidney. And so it's putting some work on it. And what does work do to your kidneys? Inflammation. Inflammation means lower filtering, lower GFR, more toxins, more waste product in your blood. It's a downhill battle. Okay, and that's where intermittent fasting, which I've talked about in the past, can help you. You can give your kidneys a little bit of a break to catch up. But there are medications available, wide variety of them. If you really need it, talk to your doctor. If you need it, use it, okay? I'm not saying don't take any pills. Just make sure you're only taking the ones you need and that your doctor told you exactly why and how long. You don't want to be taking pills for the rest of your life. So have an end insight, an exit plan to stop taking those pills. All righty. One more thing. We've talked many times about getting too much. Too much potassium. Too much protein. Too much phosphorus. But it is just as important to not have too little. Your body needs phosphorus. It needs it to work. It's going to help your body. It does stuff. What we don't need is too much of it to where it starts pulling calcium out of our bones. We got to stay balanced. And I've said this many times, but I really want to emphasize it. The, the one thing that has helped me so much in improving my health and improving my kidney health and my kidney function is finding balance, balance in everything. What medications do I take? I found the right balance of those. How much sodium? I found the right balance and the right kind of sodium to consume. Phosphorus, calcium, potassium, protein, all of those, I find the right balance. And that's the secret to everything. Vitamin D, my omega-3, everything. I'm finding the right balance to keep my body in the best environment to give it a chance to work its amazing magic. Your body is just absolutely amazing. And by giving it the right environment and leveraging intermittent fasting, which gives it a break, you know, I stop eating, my last bite is at six o'clock or earlier. I don't eat from 6 p.m. to noon. During that time, my digestive system isn't pumping in more and more stuff all night long and all morning long. My body's got the right environment and it's got less work to do so that it can function on keeping up with me, keeping my blood clean, keeping the toxins out, keeping the waste out of my blood so that everything else just works great. And that's what you want to look for. Look for that balance and what you eat. Use an app track your phosphorus and everything else. Don't get too little and don't get too much because many times too little is just as dangerous as too much. So hopefully this helps you better understand and manage your phosphorus. It's tricky. It's everywhere. If you know anyone who has kidney disease or has someone they know who has kidney disease, please share this video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. My goal is to grow those subscribers so that I can reach out to doctors and show them, look, I've got a large base of people wanting to know what can they do to improve their health, to fight kidney disease, to kick its butt. And I want those doctors to give me their time to interview them, get tips, get advice, what research is coming, how's it going, so that I can give you guys, you know, myself also, this information to help empower you with education to fight kidney disease and kick its butt, and then I want you to inspire others to do the same thing. Losing is not an option, and I am so serious. I've been saying that since stage five. It is so true. And I am not losing this battle. I am going to win it and I am winning it. I am doing so well. So many of you out there, your doctor tells you there's no hope for kidney disease. That's what they told me. Zero chance of getting better, James. 
No chance. Dialysis is the only way, and you're gonna have to get a transplant. All my ologists, I love calling my ologists, my nephrologist, my urinologist, my endocrinologist, all the ologists told me that. My primary care physician told me the opposite. It's James, 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 James. We're gonna work on this. If you will make the changes, if you will commit to a better diet and a healthier lifestyle, you're gonna get better. We're gonna, let's try it, let's see. What's the worst that can happen? You don't wanna go on dialysis right now, let's try it. I made those changes instantly and I've gotten better every day since then. And you have the opportunity to do that also. Now it doesn't work for everyone. It's not 100%, it's not guaranteed. If it was, every doctor would be saying it and the dialysis centers would be closing instead of popping up everywhere making so much money. You know those are franchises too? Oh, it would just break my heart to have that as a franchisor invest in a company that was making money off of dialysis when diet and lifestyle changes could help so many people and not that many have to have dialysis. Some people need it, but not everyone that we're throwing on it in our global lack of health care. That's what it is. It's a lack of health care. Um, I made those changes and you can too. And these videos are helping you, helping others. And I just want them to get bigger and bigger. I want to get more information because I'm getting to stage two, January 2020. That's only about seven months away. I'm really getting close. Can't wait. I'm going to celebrate like crazy. If I hit it early, whoo, it'll be a huge celebration. You guys all know about it. Anyway, it's enough of me rambling on. All right, thank you for joining me, and I'll see you in the very next video.